morning and welcome to Oasis of Life Ministry. We thank you for joining us this morning. The Holy Spirit is here. He's moving. The anointing is strong. So let's get into the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you this morning. We thank you for the precious time we've just had in praise and worship this morning. We thank you for your anointing upon that. But the atmosphere right now is thick with your glory. Powerful. Our hearts are open to receive the word, the seed of the word right now. So Holy Spirit, work through me and plant that seed. In each and every person that's here, each and every person out there that's listening, wherever and whenever they hear this message, may the seed of the word be planted perfectly and strongly in their hearts. Father, we thank you for this this morning. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to start a new series this morning. It's going to take a while. Um, let me read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 first. Simon Peter a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ <clears throat> to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter is writing under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And his second letter is much deeper, much more meat than his first letter. And he's writing to some very, very specific people in God's kingdom. Those who have obtained like precious faith. Peter, an apostle of God. Taking God's word and putting them down in a letter that would stand even today, thousands of years later. And Peter's words stand just as strong today as they did then. Amen. Let me read this from the Amplified Classic Version. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ. To those who have received, obtained an equal privilege of like precious faith with ourselves in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, it is a privilege to obtain precious faith. And look at those two words, precious faith. Peter put a value on faith. Yes. So I asked you today, how do you value your faith in God? How do you value the faith that God has provided to us through his word? How much value do we put on it? Earlier this week, as I was finishing this up, I've been studying this whole works here. This, this is everything that I could have been back. It's, it's been a year. I went back in and got all my tapes and CDs and so on. Some of the tapes, the cassette tapes didn't work anymore. <laughs> They're pretty old, so I got the CDs out. There were a couple of cassette tapes that didn't work and listened to them. I've been listening to them again, starting new notebooks and make my notes and so on to be prepared for what we're about to hear over the next few weeks and even months. But this week, as I was looking and putting this last one, or the one here today, to start this whole thing together, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, I want you to see something. And I want you to see it very strongly. And, and he took me back to the night that Mark Barkley came to our church on, in uh, Heath on Lancaster Drive. 
that evening when he called me out and he made it very clear to God, those of you who have seen Mark Barkley at the minute in the ministry conference DVDs, this man was a drill sergeant for the Marines. And as he stood before me, he just looked at me and pointed his finger at me. And he's, God's got a message for you tonight. Called me out of that crowd. And throughout that whole thing, he, he made some comments and so on. And he said, God has called you to be a prophet. And in his terms, he said, get with it. And this week, as I was looking this at this Tuesday morning, the Spirit of God stopped me and he said, your ministry is about to increase. It's about to grow. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Yeah. I want you to see nothing more than your ministry as a prophet. I want you to walk in it. I want you to talk it. I want you to live it. Everything I've called you to do has to do with the anointing of the prophet. And I sat back and I thought, okay. Wow. And I'm just going to share you my thought. I thought, you know, God called Moses. And Moses finally stepped into his ministry at 80 years old. And I sat back and I thought, well, I'm five years ahead of Moses. <laughs> so I'm ready. I'm ready for what God wants. So this morning, I want to talk to you that over these weeks, we're going to talk about obtaining life precious faith. I said, Lord, when I was putting all this together, where, where do we start? And he asked me a question. And I've preached a little bit on this before. Why preach faith? We need to know why faith is important to us. Amen? So let me read that again from the Amplified Classic Version from 2 Peter 1.1. 1 :1. Simon Peter, servant and apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ, to those who have received, obtained an equal privilege of like precious faith with ourselves in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. I would have looked up the word obtain because he used it in King James and he used it, we use it here again in this Amplified Classic Version. And I looked it up at Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Here is what it means to obtain. It means to get procure, gain, receive, and I like this last one. To obtain means to establish in order to succeed. So folks, what Peter's talking about, those who help have established themselves to live by faith in order to succeed. In other words, for folks, if we'll listen to the Word of God, we'll pay attention to the Bible, then we have the ability to succeed in every avenue of our life. Every avenue. Now, the Bible tells us several times the just shall live by faith. Amen? Well, we're the just. See? We're just the children of God. We are just the body of Christ. Amen? We're just the church. Folks, we are the just, and we live by faith. Let's go over to the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk, if you're having trouble finding this, between Nahum and Zephaniah, and that probably helps you a lot. Shock amen when you're there. Amen. 
All right. Habakkuk. I want to start here in verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. God shows prophets. Prophets are visionaries. They see things from God. Just as I was standing here as we were singing that song, the Lion of Judah roars. And I saw the nation of the United States. The whole thing is, it, it, everything else was kind of dark around it, but the United States was kind of lifted up and shown. And out of the clouds came the very face of Jesus. And, I, and, and it was, how to describe it? It was the face of Jesus, but it was also the face of a lion. And as he came out of that clouds over the United States, he began to roar. And I know, as sure as I'm standing here, what he was talking about roaring over is he put the Constitution of the United States of America in place with those men Back in 1776, and I'm going to tell you something, that Constitution will stand against anything and everything that's going on today. Yes. And Jesus is roaring, and he's got a church that is his body of Christ that is beginning to roar in this land. And we will rise up as the church that we should be in these latter days. And I'm telling you, people are going to hear our roar. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because we have done what the Bible says. And our roar needs to be a roar of faith. So we need to obtain this faith. Well, I saw that vision. And I've had visions before. And as a matter of fact, thank you, Lord. We'll go back to we went to a Benny Hinn crusade many years ago. It's in Detroit, Michigan. <coughs> it was the summertime. It was hot. And the lights were dim, and Pastor Benny was standing on the platform. And all of a sudden, I mean, the whole place went dark. Except for this light over him. There was a light over him. And he began to prophesy. And he prophesied that in these latter days, the United States, which has been the biggest witness for Jesus Christ, will return to its roots. Hallelujah. And it will begin to show the world. <coughs> The truth of Jesus Christ, of God, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he stood there like he was in a trance with this light over him. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there in my seat, and I'm seeing what he's seeing. I saw Mac rise up the United States. It was raised up above all the other nations. Everything was dark. <clears throat> but then I saw one of the states rise up above the other and the light of God hit that state and began to show, show on it and shine on it and it spread across the country. The state that rose up was Ohio. Hallelujah. It's coming from here, folks. And it's coming now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so, it's going to take our faith in this. And so this morning, I want to present, and probably for a couple of weeks here, several weeks, why preach faith? The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry, and wilt thou not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. 
Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? Grievance. The word there means toil, worry, misery, sorrow, severity throughout the world. The iniquity, sexual perversion, that's what this word means in this particular scripture. Sexual perversion, intoxication, drunkenness. It also means a total disregard for the law. What are we seeing today? All of us, Habakkuk is seeing into our time. For spoiling and violence before me, and there that raised up strife and contention, therefore the law is slacked and judgment does never go forth. For the wicked doth come pass about with righteous, about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeds. In other words, the laws were being adhered to. The laws and the Constitution were being honored. Brother Copeland said today we've got people out there, politicians trying to change our Constitution to fit what they want. It's not going to work. Amen. <clears throat> it's not going to work, for folks. That Constitution was written from this book. And to those out there who don't like it, leave. Find another country. Yeah. Don't try to change this one. Go find one that'll fit what you want. They're out there. Now look at God's regard to this. Behold ye among the heathen in regard and wonder marvelous. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it were told to you. He's telling the prophet, I'm going to work a work and you're not even going to believe what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm going to do it, says God. Now, through all that, and to save some time here, God goes through and, and the prophet sees a lot of things. Go down to chapter 2. This is Habakkuk to God. I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon a tower. Now that tower, the word tower there, means a fenced place. It means a protected, secure, uh, private area with no outside influence. So what the prophet is saying and this is what prophets and this is what any of us need to do at times. We need to get to a place where we can shut off the world and hear God. Yeah. Well, the world's making a lot of noise. There's a lot of voices coming at us. But we need to hear from God. He says, I'm going to set my, me upon the tower and will watch to see what God will say unto me. But watch this. And what I shall answer. Have a good say. I'm going to see what God has to say, but I'm also going to listen to myself and see how I answer this. When I am reproved, and the re word reproved there means an argument. In other words, God's going to give his opening argument as in a courtroom. You have opening arguments by each party. God's giving his open, opening argument to Habakkuk. Habakkuk is listening. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. <clears throat> but at the end it shall speak. The vision shall speak and not lie. Those vision tarries wait for it, because the vision will surely come. It will not tarry. When this vision arrives, it will seem like, okay, 
Maybe it hasn't been as long as we thought it was. It's here. Now we can operate in it. But look at the next words. But the just shall live by his faith. When we hear from God, when we have any kind of a vision or a dream that God gives us, we're going to have to put our faith connected with that. All right? Let me drop down now again. Let's go over to uh, chapter 2 and verse 12. Woe to him that builds a town of blood and establishes a city by iniquity. Now this is me. I believe that's the definition of a politician. Now wait a minute. See, we're not supposed to have politicians in our government. We're supposed to have statesmen, yeah. government people. Yeah. People yeah. who know the government and know the Constitution to stand up for the rights of the people. Amen. 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 Behold, not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the fire, very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. In other words, God is saying, look, what's going on? I didn't create it. I didn't do it. I didn't produce it. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now drop down to verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shigionoth. O Lord, this is Habakkuk's prayer. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years make known in, the, in wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk is asking in these times of trouble for three things. Catch this. Revive your work, bring knowledge, and operate in mercy. Folks, it's the very same thing we need to pray today. We need to pray for God to revive his work, to bring knowledge to us, and to have mercy on the world. Hello. I mean, let's face it. Come on, let's be honest here this morning. We would like to see the world receive their punishment for their actions. <laughs> but that's going to take us a step out of love. We've got to walk in love. Mercy is God's love. Amen. We need to ask mercy on the world because here's the case. If there's no mercy, there'll be no salvation. There's people out there, whether we believe it or not, there are people out there who don't know what they're doing. They need to hear about Jesus Christ. Yes, they do. Amen. Look what happened after a 23-word prayer. Oh, we got to pray all night. Oh, we got to get going. 23 words. God came. Oh. Lord, Lord. God came. He came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Parra. Selah. That means stop and think about this. It didn't take Habakkuk all night to pray. He said a prayer, sat back, and God came because of his prayer. This is a prayer we can pray today. His glory covered the heavens and earth was full of his praise. God's brightness was as the light. And God had horns coming out of his hand. Horns represents the authority and power. And there was the hiding of God's power. God's power is hidden in the authority of God's words. Let me say that again. God's power is hidden in the authority of God's words. We'll do that one more time over here. God's power is hidden in the authority of God's words. What does that mean to us? 
God's power is hidden in the authority of his words when we speak his words by faith. We are operating in God's power and his authority. Amen. Now, look at the results. Before God, what the pestilence, that sickness, and burning coals, that's disease, went forth at God's feet. So what do we get out of hot heaven cooked here? First of all, we need to hear and see God's vision. Second of all, we need to write that vision and make it plain. And number three, we have to pray God's vision and desire. And God's vision and desire is that all should be saved. We never pray like that. It's reviving work, Father. Bring in knowledge and have mercy. Because there's going to come a day, and I hope it's coming soon, folks, where God is going to say, that's it. And that's enough. You want a world without me? I'm going to take those from here in what we call the rapture. I'm going to pull them out take them to heaven, and the rest of you can operate here and see what the world would be like without my hand on it. Now, I'm not saying this world is going to be completely lost because the Holy Spirit will still be here, and he will be working on people. There will be people get born again during that time. There will people be people who stand in faith at that time, but I'm going to tell you, folks, that's going to be a much more difficult operation than it is right now. We think it's bad now. I've read the book of Revelation. Anybody read the book of Revelation? Yeah. It's bad. But God's mercy will still be in operation. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Go over Romans chapter 1. Why preach faith? The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1. We start in verse 15. So much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let me stop right there. The good news of Christ, the good news of the anointed one with his anointing, the good news of the yoke destroying, burden removing, devil defeating power of God that is in you and I as believers. That's the gospel, folks. For the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. But wait a minute. To everyone that believes. That's the qualifier. We've got to believe in the gospel of Christ. We've got to believe in the word of God to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in that gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Which means faith has to continue to grow. It has to continue to increase. Why? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Why preach faith? Because we as the just must live by faith. Go to the book of Galatians. And settle in. We're just getting warmed up, folks. Galatians in the third chapter. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Are you getting the hint yet? You know, Habakkuk put it, the just shall live by his faith. I, I believe there's a twofold, again, two layers to that, his faith. Number one, the faith that God has deposited in us, but it's God's faith that is put in there. So it's God's faith in us Romans says he dealt to every man the 
measure of faith, not a measure. Hello? We, we look at people like Oral Roberts and Reinhard Bunkley, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland. We look at these and boy, do they have faith. And we think they got a bigger measure than we did. No, they just developed theirs. Yeah. Amen. We all got the measure of faith. Without that mean, the measure of faith, you wouldn't have got born again. Right. Hello. So we see it here again. Let's go over to the book of Hebrews and the 10th chapter. Verse 38. Now. When? Now. Now. now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back from his faith, my soul, that's God's soul, shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition. Are you ready to shout amen? I said we are not ready to draw back. We are not those who draw back from perdition. Unto perdition. The word perdition means ruin, loss, or destruction. We're not ready to go back to that. Amen? But we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So, why preach faith? Because the just shall live by faith. Four times God put this in his word. I believe he's trying to make a point. And so we've got to see the value, the worth of faith. Now, I want to go to three places in the Bible this morning. God defined faith for us. Amen? Jesus defined how faith works for us. And John... The Apostle John defined what faith does for us. So let's take a look at that. Hebrews chapter 11. You're right there. Verse 1. This is God's definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now in my Bible... By the word substance, I get a little number five that takes me to the center reference. And it says that that substance means ground or confidence. Let me read it with the word confidence. Now faith is the confidence of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. How much confidence... Do we have, number one, in God? Number two, how much confidence do we have in God's Word? But let me go to this third area. How much confidence do you have in yourself with God's Holy Spirit in you? I'm just going to tell you I had a problem with that one. For a long time. The. Evening I got born again. The next Sunday we went to church with. Lynn's parents church. I got born again on a Friday night. This is a Sunday morning. And the pastor takes my hand. And shakes my hand. As Lynn's mother introduced me to him. He shakes my hand and looks at me and says, God has called you to minister his word. I didn't say a word. My, the thought in my head was no way. A number of years later, we had a guest speaker. She was a woman, prophet. Prophet. She was very, very good and had a good message both Sunday morning and Sunday night. 
after the service, she didn't call me out during the service, she did much of that the whole thing. After the service, she shook hands with me and said, God has called you to minister his gospel as a prophet. I didn't say a word. I thought, no way. And I don't know if, if you, Bill, Pat, or whether you remember, Brother Mitchell had a uh, fellow come to the church over there in Centerburg who had traveled in Smith Wigglesworth. And I don't recall his name. But he had traveled for quite some time in Smith Wigglesworth. Boy, he had what a message he gave that Sunday morning he was there. He came up to me after the service. He said, God has called you to minister his word as a prophet. Over and over I'm getting this done. Here's the point. I didn't have faith in me allowing the Holy Spirit to do in me and through me what he was calling me to do. And like I said, that when Mark Barkley had been there, I mean, just over and over and over again. No way. And I, for a long time, I had a problem with seeing myself as a prophet, partly because I had seen how much that ministry had been abused. And it took me a while to get before God. See, Rob, I had to hear from God. I heard from men, but I had to hear from God. Shut myself up and I said, God, what, what is all this? What, what are you doing here? I said, I called you to be a prophet. And he actually took me back to the day I was born. I was born with meningitis. He's going through Buffalo. When they discovered the meningitis, they put me in an incubator. Didn't even take me to my mother right away. Put me in an incubator and talk, came and told her. She said, Where, where's my son? And told her, you need to be prepared. He's not going to live. The next day, my grandmother came up to the hospital. Put her hands on that incubator. She walked in that hospital. Told them, I've got to go in there where that incubator is. This little five foot ten, four foot ten woman, she was four foot ten in every direction. Sweet lady, love my grandma, Nana. She went into that room, they let her in, she put her hands on that incubator, and she just shouted, He shall live and not die, and he shall preach with dynamics the word of God the rest of his life. Did she walk out? That was still in God's ears. God worked on that for a long time. For me to accept what God wanted. But see, I had to get to the place where I heard it from God. And I had to get where I had faith in what God was telling me he wanted to use me as. Amen. And that comes for any of us. So here we have God's definition. And I'm going to read it that way again. Now faith is the confidence of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by faith the elders obtained a good report. Why preach faith? Because we need to keep a good report with God, and that good report's going to come out of our living by faith. God keeps good records. By trade, I'm an accountant. I have to keep the financial records for people as an accountant. God keeps records. He's got five books in heaven that he keeps. One of those books is our words. Now, if you're in the right line 
of judgment when the end comes, you're going into heaven. You'll be okay. But there is a book going to be opened. And it's going to be opened that tells of your life and all you've done. Matthew 12 says we're going to give an account to all our idle words. Everything we do is in that book. The Bible says in the last days we are going to receive one of two things. Everything in that book is going to be burned because it wasn't done right. Or we're going to receive crowns. And I've had people go, well, I don't care if I get a crown in the end. I want my crowns. And I'll tell you why. Because after that all judgment is done, folks, we're going to take those crowns to the throne of grace. And we're going to have something to present to Jesus because without him, none of us would have gotten any of those crowns. Amen. 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 I mean, that place is going to be piled with crowns for the King of Kings. Hallelujah. I want to be able to walk up there and present him, not with ashes, because my works were burned, but with crowns. Amen. Yes. Be in that judgment, not the white throne judgment. That's different. Oh. You don't want to be standing in that line. Verse 3, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It doesn't say that things were made out of nothing. They were made out of God's faithful words. Catch that, folks. By faith, we have to choose to understand that's true. This is another double layer here. We've got to understand this is true. But we also have to know that God created all of this by his faith. Amen. This is God's definition of faith that we just read. Now, let's go over to Mark 11. Let me see if I can just read through that. This right here. Mark chapter 11. You've heard this before around here. This is Jesus defining to us how faith works. Jesus answering, verse 22, Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, <coughs> excuse me, whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. Those last two verses are all about seed time and harvest. All of this is, but those are about the seed of forgiveness being harvested in your own life. We'll get to all that. That's Jesus' definition of how faith operates. We got to speak, but we got to speak in faith. All right. Let's go over to First John chapter five. Are you enjoying this this morning? <laughs> John chapter 5 verse 4 tells us, John tells us what faith will do for us. For whatsoever, John 5, 4, 1 John 5, 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. You want to overcome what's going on in the world? Amen. Amen. 
put your faith out there. Now, whatsoever. Larry called me one day. I think I've told you a little bit about this. He called me one day. He says, read that verse. I said, I read it. He said, but it doesn't say whosoever. It says whatsoever. And I kind of thought about that. Whatsoever is born of God. Well, first of all, faith is born of God in us. Amen? What else is born again in us? God's Word. God's Word is born again in us. So the Word, by faith, born in us, spoken by us, shall overcome the world and give us victory. Where is our victory going to come from? The Word of God by faith. Why should we preach faith? Without faith there is no victory. Why? Because the, as the just or justified, we have to speak God's word by faith. Amen? Did you get anything out of this this morning? That was just the introduction. We're going to go a little bit further with this because we all know without faith it's impossible to please God. And faith is our access to grace. Yes. Access to grace. Without that, we don't access His grace. When I, when I look at these and put these together, and I've already given Larry the whole thing out here. There's actually four lessons. But Larry, <laughs> those lessons can take a little bit more than just four yeah. lessons. <laughs> look at what happened here. And I know this. The praise and worship this morning opened our hearts to receive this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. The Holy Spirit, protect this message in us and seal this message with roots that in no way, no how, no shape or form can Satan or men Take that truth that we just heard in this place out of us. Because the roots are going deep. And we thank you for it. Father, I ask you to bless these precious people here and out there that have heard this. Bless them mightily this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. God bless you.